All right, well, uh, see, uh, this might be the last video on this one if we can get through the rest of the story and the content. Um, so you notice that there's sort of a switching of scenes back and forth between the husband and the wife, the wife at home, um, and the husband giving the speech. And we want to think about, too, that, you know, these are not just disconnected scenes. There's a reason the author is alternating, okay? So there's a parallelism between the alternating scenes. Okay, how? And what do I mean by parallelism? Well, when we're reading downward like that, then we're seeing, you know, Monica next, Henry, Monica, Henry. Okay, that, that's, that's our process of reading as we go down the page, right? But th that's not the actual time frame that's happening. So it's more like this. Okay, Monica. Say Monica. But then happening at the same time, but in another place, are the synthank scenes okay so they're parallel they're happening concurrently okay they're concurrent events they're happening at the same time and so they're paralleled time wise but they alternate for us as we read the story however the themes overlap okay because we're dealing with uh, this idea of what is real, what's synthetic. Okay, so if we want to say, you know, um, fake versus real is a topic, and we could just say reality, nature. So, I mean, we could use the word artificial instead of real to have a more technical sense. They're using the word, you know, synthetic a lot. Created fake real. <laughs> we might put the two words together, fake real. Synthetic, in a way. And that's what the, the company has been inventing, increasingly more seemingly real things, okay? So we want to say, well, what's going to be the connection between these two layers of the story, two different things that are happening, the speech and then Monica interacting with David and Teddy at home. Okay, and we had obviously the issue of intelligence, is brought up at the Synthank meeting and with David. The issue of what's real was brought up with David. Uh, we can say appearance versus reality because, uh, you know, everyone externally, they said, was very, very beautiful, skinny, but under the surface, Okay, that's the appearance, but under the surface they've got this tapeworm inside of them just eating so that they can eat more and more food while other people in the world, in the overpopulated world, are just starving. Okay, so there's a fakeness on the surface. What we think is real is not real. Okay, what we think are skinny, happy people. He had said earlier in the story, you know, um, 
basically a, a less sophisticated generation would see these beautiful skinny people eating all this food and say they were beautiful people, except their eyes, he said, except their eyes. Something in, inhuman and not happy in their eyes, even though they can eat all this food and whatever, okay? So, and clearly, you know, uh, things are going on on the surface that we don't quite see or understand. Okay. Think of like surface of water or a screen or a reflection. What's underneath that? So keep this all in mind as we uh, go through the rest. These are key um, themes. And by the way, I mentioned a joke that he makes about the serving man being neuter. Why were people laughing? He said, you know, the serving man can help with everything in the home except some stuff with reservations. Well, he, he's making a joke here about the sexuality of the serving man. They're saying um, they didn't give him private parts, any sexuality. Amid all the triumphs of our civilization, yes, and amid the crushing problems of overpopulation, too, it's sad to reflect how many millions of people suffer from increasing loneliness and isolation. Our serving man will be a boon to them. He will always answer, and the most vapid conversation cannot bore him. For the future, we plan more models, male and female, some of them without the limitations of the first one, I promise you of more advanced design, true bio-electronic beings. Well, he's not going to have the limitations of, of sexuality in the later models. So even human companionship through this bio-robot will include sexuality. Not only will they possess their own computer capable of individual programming, they will be linked to the world data network. Thus, everyone will be able to enjoy the equivalent of an Einstein in their own homes. Personal isolation will be banished forever. He sat down to enthusiastic applause. Even the synthetic serving man sitting at the table dressed in an ostent unostentatious suit applauded with gusto. Why are they inventing all these things? To cure loneliness. That's actually why they've invented this serving man. Everybody's more and more lonely in an increasingly technological society. So does it cure loneliness? Who else is lonely? Who else have we seen being sad and lonely? Well, Monica. She's staring out the window. She stops thinking. She's depressed. What's, what's going on with her? What's going on here? Right? If loneliness is a connection, Henry's tried to invent things to, to help people with their loneliness. Is it working? All right, next scene. Dragging his satchel, David crept round the side of the house. He climbed on to the ornamental seat under the living room window and peeped cautiously in. His mother stood in the middle of the room. Her face was blank. Its lack of expression scared him. He watched, fascinated. He did not move. She did not move. Time might have stopped as it had stopped in the garden. Notice David and time are brought together. Time is, is something abstract, right? There, it's kind of abstract. We can't see it. We can't feel it directly. 
but we know it's there. We know it's real. But in a sense, it's invisible. And it's connected to David and his feelings, right? He asked about time. He's thinking about abstract philosophical concepts. Notice David is outside the window. Outside the window, he's outside of the home now. He's not inside of the home. And he's divided from her by a screen. I don't know why this thing is lagging, and then it makes it not work as well. So. Okay, he's divided by an invisible screen here. We saw screens before changing nature and so on. At last she turned and left the room. After waiting a minute, David tapped on the window. Teddy looked round, saw him, tumbled off the table, and came over to the window. Fumbling with his paws, he eventually got it open. They looked at each other. I'm no good, Teddy. Let's run away. You're a very good boy. Your mummy loves you. Slowly, he shook his head. If she loved me, then why can't I talk to her? You're being silly, David. Mummy's lonely. That's why she had you. She's got daddy. I've got nobody except you, and I'm lonely. Teddy gave him a friendly cuff over the head. If you feel so bad, you better go to the psychiatrist again. I hate that old psychiatrist. He makes me feel I'm not real. He started to run across the lawn. The bear toppled out of the window and followed as fast as its stubby legs would allow. Monica Swinton was up in the nursery. She called to her son once and then stood there undecided. All was silent. All right, David again. When he goes to the psycho psychiatrist, he doesn't feel real. David is struggling with loneliness. Monica is struggling with loneliness. Crayons lay on his desk, obeying a sudden impulse. She went over to the desk and opened it. Dozens of pieces of paper lay inside. Many of them were written in crayon in David's clumsy writing, with each letter picked out in a color different from the letter preceding it. None of the messages was finished. My dear mummy, how are you really? Do you love me as much? Dear mummy, I love you and daddy, and the sun is shining. Dear, dear mummy, Teddy's helping me write to you. I love you and Teddy. Darling mummy, I'm your one and only son, and I love you so much that sometimes... Dear mummy, you're really my mummy, and I hate Teddy. Darling mummy, guess how much I love... Dear mummy, I'm your little boy, not Teddy, and I love you, but Teddy... Dear Mummy, this is a letter to you just to say how much, how much, however, so much. Monica dumped the pieces of paper and burst out crying. In their gay, inaccurate colors, the letters fanned out and settled on the floor. That just means happy. That's the old usage of the word gay. It doesn't mean what it means nowadays about sexuality or something. These letters are very, very interesting. Right? What is David trying to express? He's struggling to express emotions, to express love, to communicate, right? To express that. Okay, he's communicating with his mom. He wants to express uh, affection. And he doesn't know quite how to tell her in person. He's writing these letters. But notice something happened that was bad with Teddy. He hates Teddy. He says, I'm your little boy, not Teddy. So something dark is going on under the surface here. Okay. There's some hidden problem about Teddy and David and the whole idea of his sonship to Monica. Okay, we'll come back to that and uh, yeah, we'll need one more video to finish up the rest of the story. So we'll be back in a minute with that.